This is an Urban Era, and welcome to the Toy of Kit Bashing, where today we're going to build this lovely EMD FTA. In the late 1930s, many desert railroads were keen on dieselization. Trying to maintain thirsty locomotives in a region devoid of water was always a pain, requiring water treatment or lengthy transport to better sources. So like many roads, the Alta reached out to Alco and EMD to explore options. The original FTs, made built by EMD, had a demonstration run in 1939 across the main line from Oakland to Los Angeles, and ordered for 12 AB sets soon followed. They arrived in a very intricate delivery scheme, similar to the Western Pacific sets, but no historic photos of the locomotives have yet surfaced in our archives yet. They were used very, very, very hard during the war, and made most of their mileage in Mexico and Southern California to save water. Like many FTs, they received overhauls right after the war ended, and the 1946 Citrus scheme was born. It was a simplified version of the more complex 1939 scheme and applied to all reshopped and new units beginning in 1946. The colors are period correct, using real DuPont and Deluxe Company color codes, matched with true color paints for the models. The pale yellow is that used on ATSF, FTs, and Seaboard Line E units. The dark olive is SP Dark Olive Green. The orange is Omaha Orange, a popular General Motors color used on the Great Northern, Western Pacific, and others. You can also buy automobiles and trucks in this color. There's a link to a PDF in the video description that covers a majority of real paint used by the railroads and their locomotives below. Choosing realistic paint is a huge step towards creating a realistic paint scheme, especially one from a specific time period. Next, I created an Adobe Illustrator file of my FT to use as a test for a variety of paint scheme ideas I had. If you'd like to download and play with an FT model that I made for Illustrator yourself, join my Patreon and it'll be up there for you to play with and paint into your own schemes. Shapes are the next major step. EMD had a styling department unrivaled in its ability to develop iconic, beautiful, and cohesive paint schemes. They all followed what's known as a design language, which combines elements together to create something new. For inspiration, we must dust off the old internet and visit two websites. USLoki.tripod.com and PaintShop.Railfan.net. There's a superb primer on PaintShop that shows you a variety of EMD and Alco specific design elements you can combine into a realistic period paint scheme for your own railroad. US Loki has literally thousands of examples of paint jobs for you to comb through. Be aware the colors on the website are not accurate, but the application is, so take that into consideration when looking at them. I knew I wanted a bow wave akin to the Western Pacific, and I wanted to use dark olive to mask soot and grime on the roof and on the underframe of all the units. Next was lettering. I cannot stress this enough, choose a typeface that existed back in the years you're modeling. I've seen world famous model railroads using modern computer generated 2000s era typefaces in gritty 1930s and even 19th century era layouts and it really is jarring to see. So a quick search online to find out when a typeface came out in history is very important to do. It's one of those things that once you learn it, you cannot unsee it once you know. Common railroad typefaces like Railroad Roman, Clarendon, Century Gothic all date from before 1920. Futura was 1927, and Helvetica 1957. If you're modeling a modern era, you could probably get away with some computer-generated typefaces. Many railroads developed custom typefaces for their own railroads, or someone got creative in the paint booth at the back shops one day as well. All Alta lettering from before the debut of the FTs was Clarendon Bold, as seen on my 440. The FTs were instrumental in debuting the streamlined modern type seen here. This typeface is called Pontiac Inline Shadow, inspired by pre-war typefaces similar to those used by EMD and General Motors at the time. While most units have the type centered along the length of the bow wave, this one had to be scooted over to accommodate the Santa Fe style lit side number boards on this unit. Often paint schemes had to be modified to fit different locomotives, so take that into consideration when you're designing yours. You can see the others on my design page have slight different variations to fit different body styles as needed, but all have a cohesive style across them all that links them together and creates a family look. So on to the model itself. It's a Bowser model from a couple of decades ago festooned with detail parts. It has a Western Pacific style number board above the cab so you can read the numbers clearly from more angles than just the side of the locomotive. Also on the roof are four cyclone style spark arresters to prevent dry brush fires in California. A variety of grab irons and lift rings add more durable detail as well. 
a firecracker antenna for radio communication, a Southern Pacific style snowplow to fight all that snow you're going to find in California in the high desert. Finally, a working diaphragm by American Limited to add that final bouncy touch. Pink came next. I'd already primed the locomotive years ago, so I went in with the True Color SP Dark Olive and painted the side frames and fuel tank off the model itself. Then, I hand painted the pilot with MIG oil brushers in a rusty brown so that I could chip it back using my X Acto knife to get the next layers of paint down and down and down for weathering. The shell got painted with Rust Oleum Summer Squash spray paint, a color I've used for years to get that pale yellow just right. Next was a lot of masking to get the True Color Omaha Orange on. I used some blue painter's tape a couple of days after the yellow had dried. The orange went on very well, but the painter's tape was too sticky and it chipped when I tried to remove it, which gave me an idea. The unit was painted back in 1946, which was 21 years ago in 1968, so I'll make this unit much more weathered. The chips will add a lot of character. The roof was masked and painted green. The tape also pulled up some of the Omaha orange on the cab, so that required a respray. Next time, I'll use better masking tape. Which type of masking tape is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. I spent a couple of months off and on designing full decal sheets for a variety of Alta rolling stock. I used micro gloss to give the decals a nice place to land, and it really started to take shape. It already looks nearly complete, but there's some additional decals that need to be applied. First of all, we need a logo for the front of the locomotive. Well, at the time I was painting the model, I didn't have a proper logo for the Alta, so I developed one with Alexander. I wanted to take inspiration from Talavera tile motifs that go back centuries in Mexico, Spain, and all the way back to the Moors. After looking through hundreds of beautiful designs, I felt this one had just the right railroady look to it. Alexander then set to work, creating three eras of the logo, from which the original ornate blue and white herald used on the older equipment, to the white outline version used for freight cars, and finally the simplified 1950s version that will adorn this locomotive here. Once those were done, we also did the number boards on the nose, roof, and sides. The entire model was then sealed with dull coat to begin the weathering. Weathering in this case was directly based on photographs of FTs near the end of their lives on multiple railroads. I especially paid attention to older Santa Fe examples since they lasted in the 1960s. Careful airbrushing and brush painting was all that I needed, and then it was all sealed again for a final wash that went over the entire locomotive to snap the entire look together. Now it's time to pop the glass back in the model and give it a test run. The Bowser drivetrains are bricks and can pull quite a bit. It'll be the perfect addition to a freight consist amongst any of the other motive power that will be painted up in Alta paint schemes over the next few years. If you want to build your own FT, I'd recommend this model, or to buy the more finely detailed Intermountain FTs to start with. On the next Joy of Kit Bashing, we'll build its distant cousin, an Alco Sentry C625. No, that's not a typo. It's a real locomotive that was designed, but never built. This next episode will also include how to design paint schemes for Alco locomotives in a simplified 1960s era paint job. Stick around for that. In the meantime, this has been Inner Urban Era. Thank you so much, and I look forward to your comments.